Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Paul Plant Two, and today is a celebration lap because I'm gonna show y'all how I finally created a successful backyard meadow in one single year. But before we get into it, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. So it is bright and early. It is May 16th and behind me we have my wildflower meadow. It looks absolutely amazing. There's a huge variety of native wildflower species and this has been one heck of a journey. So I'm gonna walk you guys through, tell y'all what it took to get here and then we're gonna go through and highlight a ton of the really cool flower species but first let's do the history of this space now it all started about one year ago in january slash february where i removed a ton of shrubs and bushes that previously were right here but didn't provide any type of benefits for wildlife for insects for birds so i yanked them out it was a bunch of big ass boxwoods so i got rid of those I seeded the entire area and then I waited. And what happened six months after that is I had a ton of grass and all types of invasive species take over the bare dirt. So I had to remove those. That took so much time. So while I waited for the seeds to germinate, I grabbed a few milkweeds, the Mexican milkweed, and a few native species from Lowe's that were on sale. I threw them in, and then I waited another few months. And finally, I had a ton of wildflowers come through. So first, it was the wine cups. Beautiful pink flowers that showed all over this area. It almost was like a monoculture of pink. And then we had the Coreopsis, the yellow come through. Then we had the blanket flowers pop up. Then we had the bee balm with its alien pink-like flowers come through. And finally, we have the American basket flower, which looks amazing. So yeah, that kind of is a play-by-play, -play, a step-by-step, -step, but let's hop in here and I'm gonna show you guys some other things that are going on. So let's go ahead and take a tour of the wildflower meadow in the first year. And this is the thing about gardening is it takes a lot of time in order to reach the final goal. And sometimes you almost can't see it until it finally is in front of your face. But there's a huge time investment to create a meadow such as this. So below me, we have the blanket flowers, man. These are popping up in absolute abundance. They're kind of dominating right now, which is very cool. And then some items I did get from Lowe's that mix in quite nicely are of course the nice rock rose, which are native to Texas. I do live in Houston, Texas, zone nine. And I don't really wanna say A or B because the weather has been so crazy. I don't even know what it is at this point. Stuff is wild. But I got all the seeds from Native American Seed Company. Man, they came through because I got like the pollinator mix and this does not disappoint. So speaking of pollinators, I have a Mexican milkweed. Now this dude is non-native to the United States. It's native to Mexico, obviously. But as long as you cut it down in the winter, everything is good with this guy, as long as you make it behave like an annual native milkweed. But y'all can see, this dude is going to seed right now. So it's gonna be very cool to see more of these guys pop up throughout the landscape and ultimately start to take over, which I think will be really nice. And then you'll have a nice genetic variety of milkweed, which is always exciting. Now, moving along, we have the bee balm and you guys can see there is a native bee in there just pollinating and these flowers look absolutely alien, which is what I love about them. Now they have a nice pink color. This one is about to pop off as well and they attract bees, butterflies, and overall they just look super cool. So I'm so glad these guys are included. Now one flower that is in a similar color variety and color palette is this American, oh, look at it, basket flower. Now this guy is popping off. It looks absolutely crazy. And I've never seen one of these before. And I'm so glad I got a ton of them in my garden. Now they do get really tall, which is interesting. But after seeing the final result from when they were in like a clenched fist form to their final fluorescence, is really amazing. Like y'all can't sit here and look at this and tell me it does not look absolutely majestic. Oh my God. Now I also have a ton of Coreopsis that is growing as well. 
These grow on the side of the road here in Houston and in pretty much any open plains like area. And they're just that pop of yellow that you definitely need in a garden. So just check these dudes out. Tick seed Coreopsis. There are a couple of different varieties that I have interwoven and intermixed in. We also have this partridge pea, which is very cool, very tall. And then randomly, I threw some pumpkin seeds from a jack-o'-lantern I found on the side of the road. And there you have it, man. You have a big pumpkin plant as well. Now some plants to look forward to are gonna of course be this Black Eyed Susan, super fuzzy leaf, which is very cool. We also have cone flowers that are gonna come in as well. And one nuisance that is coming in in this area that you always have to keep an eye on are of course these grasses. So a lot of people think if you just throw down wildflower seeds, then you get a meadow and you just don't do anything. Well, if it's in your backyard, you kind of do have to take control or else the grasses will take control of you. If I had a huge acreage of wildflower meadow, then it'd be something completely different where I let the grasses pretty much do their thing. But in this area, a good amount of the grasses that pop up are non-native. So I want to yank them out that way the flowers can still get the light they need in order to shine and pop. So yeah, I'm going to have to get rid of these sprigs of grass that are coming in and it did just rain so I can pull a lot of these guys out. I know this one is non-native. So below me, y'all can see how the patch goes from one edge and kind of abruptly stops right here and then continues a little bit in this area. Essentially, my dogs run paths throughout this meadow area and definitely do divide it up. So in this area, there's a ton of grasses that are popping up, which again, I have to get rid of and I'm gonna have to reseed this area as well. So here we go. I definitely did not get rid of the roots. That's unfortunate. Until you get the other areas established, you're gonna be battling some bullshit. Now, if you check out this area right here, I do believe we have another milkweed that's going to be a native variety that is coming through. And as I always mention, man, these American basket flowers are just popping. So ultimately, you might be wondering why put forth this effort in the first place? Well, there are a ton of reasons, not only for the pollinators, the insects, not only to make your garden look better, but this is hands down one of the absolute cheapest ways to make a garden space look awesome. I spent $50 on one bag of seeds and I got all of these plants. If I were to buy plugs individually, let's say at two to $3 a pop, I'd probably be in this like a thousand bucks or so because there's just so many different flowers and there's a ton of variety that they do not sell at nurseries. Like that basket flower, not for sale at nurseries. Bee balm, rarely for sale at nurseries. And then a lot of the stray species of Coreopsis that do bring in the pollinators aren't readily available at any big box store garden center. So this is the cheapest way to go. All you have to do is weed here and there, which you're pretty much gonna do anyways and then ultimately just wait. You have to have patience in the process, but my God, did it pay off. Seeing the butterflies come in is absolutely amazing. Seeing all the flowers pop off is crazy. Seeing the birds come down and munch is nice, and seeing native pollinators, native bee species that are not all European honeybees in the garden is super cool. So if you guys did enjoy, please smash that like button. I'm just doing this to show y'all that it is possible to pull this off. It will take a year. It's hard to see when I make these videos and everything just looks like a bare patch of ground, what will actually pop up. But this is why I have been doing this for a couple of years in order to show y'all the full process and the ultimate results at the end of the day. So always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. And stay tuned because uh, this area of my yard has definitely been going through some major problematic meadow growth stages. So I don't just wanna show you guys the good. This area has been an absolute nightmare because of a couple of different types of invasive grass species. But until next time, I will see y'all soon. Smash a like button, drop a comment down below, and hopefully this is some motivation to turn a couple of patches of your yard into a wildflower meadow. Just do what is manageable to you. And until next time, plan two is out. Killing these songs, leaving a bloody life, I roost them. And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to